I'm Caitlin Bristow. Your session is now starting. Welcome to the <laughs> I like it. I feel like I'm um, in a dream today for some reason. Do you ever get like that? I felt like that this whole week. Really? It's so Same. weird. And Scoot and I just said that to each other yesterday. I was like, I don't feel like I'm living life right now. Wait, I'm... Something's going on. Something. And I talked to a friend about that in LA yesterday, the exact same thing. Like, I just feel like I'm, like, in a cloud, like, just floating around. Okay, uh, literally, you just validated all of my feelings because... Like, there's same. something in the air. I Do you follow um this guy? I'm going to show you something. I wonder if he posted about it. His name is Chris. Chris Corsini. Bitch, I'm not moving. Don't ask. When I decide to move, I will... Oh, my God, I love him, though. I'm obsessed. So, he... He's so cute. He's so cute, and he's coming on the podcast in August, which is going to be really exciting. Um, but he just, he says it in a way where I'm like, yes. And I love that will he does Will you send me language. that profile? Yes, I will right now. I've never seen him. I was wondering if he was going to do anything about what's in the air right now or what's what's going on with the stars, the moon. I don't know, because I asked him. I was there like, has to be something going on because I feel the exact same. Even when I was driving here, I was like, you know, when you do like days out, and you don't even know where you're going or yes. what you're doing. That is so me. And I yesterday I felt like I was in a daze and then I just started crying like and I didn't really know why. And all these emotions started coming up. And the day before that, I was laying on Cat and Worth's floor in a Snuggie crying. And I'm Dude, like, there's the something in the air then because the other I don't cry a lot, especially like out of nowhere. Like I always know what it's about. My sister called me the other day and I started talking right when I heard her voice. I just started sobbing yeah. like uncontrollably. Just like, what is going on? I'm like, honestly, there's nothing like I feel like I just need to let something out. It's so weird. Like something just feels like heavy. Well, then welcome to grape therapy because we're going <laughs> to let's unpack it. I'm really, I'm really Are we curious. rolling? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, we're good. Rolling. Oh, yeah, we're oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want that part taken out? <laughs> no. no, I love it. I love talking about feelings too, but it was the weirdest thing because my sister called and the minute I heard her voice, it was like a close voice. I heard it and I just started like sobbing. She's like, what's going on? And then I went into this whole thing about like things that I've been feeling lately and then I did feel better. But honestly, ever since then, and that was a few days ago, actually, I've just felt like in this weird like cloud. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> I felt this way after COVID. And I remember specifically, remember when we went out to dinner, me, you, Catworth, Daniel, Scoot, and we went to um, Bourbon. Bourbon. Yeah. And we were all sitting around that round table. I had one drink and I, I was like, I feel like I'm in a dream. I feel like weirdly depressed. And I felt like like cloud like and that's how i've been feeling this past week but Dude, i don't what do you think that in. is then because then i started like googling things and like looking into it and like reading my books and stuff and everything says it's like uh like anxiety i never think of myself as being a depressed person but i think all of us have a little bit yeah. in us at different times totally. you know um but mine is just more kind of like i'm just in really deep thoughts right now that i think i'm getting like me lost too. in my thoughts yeah and then they're not even really making sense to me yeah like um i don't know it's wild i, I actually too i never work miss a workout this morning i drove to yoga and i do yoga every single day and then we wow. both work trained with kevin yeah lift weights but um yoga it's like my favorite part of my day i went there i sat in the parking lot i'm like i just don't want to do it today and that really? never happens to me i sat in the car and i sat there and then i just came home and I like stretched in my gym at home. Um, and then did you get to go lift weights or? Did no, you then just... I just, I lifted weights like at the gym at yeah. our house. Okay. Um, but that never happens to me. I was just like in this thing. I was like, I don't, I don't want to do it. I don't want to be around anyone right now. I don't feel like faking it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Well, that's another thing. <clears throat> I totally align with you on this where you, you'd rather just not show up than show up and fake it. Oh yeah. I'm totally like that. I just, I refuse and I feel like it drains me more than anything is if I have to be on when I really can't be on. And that was another thing. I went to New York to the Sports Illustrated party and I was so mentally drained and then got there and was so like overstimulated and it was high highs. And then I got in and I was like, everyone's just trying so hard to be somebody. And then I was like, I want to go home. Well, and I, I got low. I saw you at the gym the other day before you went to that. And yeah. I couldn't believe that you're going to that because that sounds like pure hell to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, absolute hell to me. Yeah. Um, but no, I know what you mean. You get there and you get stimulated. And I feel like you and I are very similar in this way. Like when I'm around a group of people, like I'll turn it on. And I'm not totally. necessarily turning it on. Something in me gets amped up. Like Energized. I have fun. Yeah. Like I don't care. And that's why today, like, because I was talking, like Scoot obviously knows that I've been feeling like that for a few days. So when 
I was leaving the house today to come here, he's like, wait, do you not want to do the podcast? I'm like, no, it's Caitlin. Like, it's so yeah. easy. It's like talking to a friend. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm not even going to think about being on a podcast. But for me, it's just, and I'm in a place, Kristen and I talked about this the other day for the past, like, two days. We brought up, like, twice, two days in a row now where we were saying, like, I just am in a place where, like, I don't want to do anything that I don't want to do right yeah. now. Like, you yeah. know, there's always going to be obligations that you have to do and stuff, but I'm in a place where I'm, and I think it's because secretly, like, I don't think I can handle it. Like, I would, like, yeah. go to something I don't want to be at and probably start crying or get in a fight with somebody, you Truly. know? And I think that's really about, like, protecting yourself. Like, when you really know yourself, like, I just can't do things I don't want to do right now. Yeah. No, I'm on the same page as you. I didn't really want to go to new york and do that but i really liked the image of me and megan fox in a photo together and i was like do it for the gram caitlin which then drains me even more because i'm like why am i caring so much about that and then i get there and it doesn't happen i was like okay machine gun kelly you'll do i like had to get kicked off I the carpet i saw you guys on the carpet together. <laughs> that was so good though i was like hey this is okay, i mean that kind of made enough. it worth worth it it was it was just funny but like i'm in the same boat where i keep thinking is this gonna like is my cup gonna be overfloweth after this event and that one i knew it wouldn't and i came home and felt so drained but that's yeah. also because i did what i have worked on so much and i did the comparison comparison thing the whole time i was at sports illustrated where that's stupid because they literally celebrate all shapes and sizes with sports illustrated now and age right. where i'm like starting to feel like i'm getting up there and so to see beautiful women of all across the spectrum, age, size, everything, I was like, this should make me happy. But what was I doing? I was finding the skinny models who <laughs> are like young and <laughs> fruitful and have so many ovaries and eggs. And I was just like, F and then I did the spiral and I hate myself for it. I mean, that's a place that you would, though, because regardless, I mean, Sports Illustrated, it's Martha Stewart's on the cover right. this month, right? But it's still like we know what Sports Illustrated right. is really about, you know, <laughs> yeah. like we know that it's like that's just like, oh, this is cute if we put her on the cover. But yeah, there's got to be like a feeling to it. Well, the root of it all is like, <clears throat> wow, these magazines used to give me body dysmorphia and really me right. out back in the day. And so now I'm like. I've grown so much and I've done so much work that I went, I would have never went there 10 years ago because I would have been so self-conscious where this time I went and I was like, yeah, and like really went for it. But I still caught myself doing those things. I was just able to not like drown in the thoughts. Well, I think that that's honestly the difference too. Cause I feel like all my years, I grew up in Los Angeles, did all the celebrity hair forever. So I was going to everyone's parties yeah. and I'm doing all the like Hollywood parties and premieres and all that kind of stuff. And I was in that world. And when I left and came to Nashville, I was like, I don't want to be a part of that world more like it doesn't yeah. fulfill me or anything yeah. so i left it and i think that now getting older the thought of doing any of that stuff that feels a little bit forced where it's like oh maybe i should go to this because who knows what will come from it i just can't do it like i just don't want to that's a great place to be <laughs> that is a really great place to be but i mean we're not retired so it's like you still want to but i, I honestly feel like I can uh, I can navigate it in a different way, you know, because um, you always like you have a business. I have a business, you know, and I do still have to meet people and I have to talk about my products and stuff. Yeah. But I want to do it in such a different way. Like, I don't want to go be try to be a part of the flash stuff, you know. Yeah. And I, uh, yeah, I feel like networking, though, is changing. Like, I feel like networking now is like can... bonding and like, yeah, like I, that's why I love podcasts. Like I will do so many podcasts and everyone on my team for DP Hugh, my hair brand, they'll they'll say, you know, why do you do so many podcasts? Like, aren't you getting burnt out? I'm like, no, that's what I actually love. Like, I yeah. like connecting with people. Yes. You know, I want to connect with a different audience, you know, yeah. and I can talk about the things that I'm interested. I'm in, interested in pop culture, things you talk about on a podcast and we talk about beauty. We talk about my products if it comes up naturally. And yeah. I really enjoy that. But I don't want to go to a big, stupid party and try to act like someone and shake a bunch I, of hands yeah. like I can't do it that's yeah. not in me it feels phony to me it feels really phony it's yeah. I agree I feel like that I feel like that also comes with age and certain like being a, in a certain place in your life but I have found that networking to me now I don't think about things as networking if I go to an event I actually connect with people and have different kinds of conversations yeah. because of all the therapy I've done I'm like no I want to actually have meaningful conversations which al always leads to meeting incredible people and then and that put, aligns me with the right things that I want to do totally in my life. I totally agree, yeah. And I'm like, oh. So I look at networking as like connecting now with people and having like a nice conversation instead of being like, I hate the, you know, what do you do? Or like, uh, this, actually, just... this guy this morning comes, drops off furniture and looks in here and he goes, what do you do? And I'm like, eh. <laughs> like, what? what? Um, podcast? And he's like, what's it about? And I'm like, oh, 
Like, I'm in a panic because I was like... Like, the last thing you want to talk about. I was like, you just woke me up at 7 a.m., sir. I am so annoyed at you right now. Well, I also feel like probably for you, if I had to get... I mean, the past years of your life have been about, like, self-promotion and doing that. Like, you get to a point where you're like, I don't want to talk about that part of my life or I don't want to yeah it, everything feels like you're selling yourself to somebody yes. and I hate that more than anything I don't want to sell myself to someone let's get to know each other like on a human level and then we maybe start to like each other yes and then I like when I walk away from something like oh I really like that guy he was nice and then someone says oh did you know that he was a big celebrity right. color store he has a great product line and then they're like oh that's even more interesting yeah I'm not good at the pushing myself all right safe to say all the Vinos know just how much I value personal growth, mental health, and I will say so much of my growth in life has definitely stemmed from therapy. I just can't say enough good things about how much therapy means to me, how much it's meant to relationships that have thrived from me going to therapy, and I know it will be an ongoing part of my life forever, no matter what I'm going through or need to talk about. Talkspace has really changed the therapy game by making it actually accessible and affordable because I know so many people personally and I have seen my vinos in the Facebook group talk about how therapy can just be so expensive and inconvenient. I hear you. And by doing everything online, Talkspace has actually made getting the help you need easy. So at Talkspace.com, you can sign up, get a personalized match with a therapist who is right for you, typically within just 48 hours. Now, there's no need to commute with appointments or miss the appointments or miss the time at work because you can have a virtual session no matter where you are. Talkspace also offers couples counseling, therapy for teens, and has psychiatrists who can prescribe and manage mental health medication. Plus, it's secure and private, so you can definitely feel safe. Now, as a listener of this podcast, you're going to get $100 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash Vine. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash Vine to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's Talkspace.com slash Vine. I've been podcasting for six years. I'm like, aren't people so sick of me? Or like, I'm, I have this fear that all of my listeners are going to like turn on me and hate me for something or not be there with me through like highs and lows. And then I get scared. Oh my God. I mean, I get it in a different way. You know, I, yeah, I totally do. But I think the thing to remember is it's like anything, you know, like things are going to ebb, ebb and flow. People can take a break too. People can listen, not listen to the podcast for a while and then they miss you, you know, and like, I hope so. <laughs> they will. you have that personality. Definitely. I'd miss them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's how I feel about social media. Like I genuinely love it. Like yeah. I love it yeah. because I social media all the time. Like you do, like we keep it going, but yeah. I really, really enjoy it. Cause even like my close family friends and like my family or even like my mom, I was talking to the other day and she watches all my Instagram stuff and she's like, do you ever get sick of it? And I'm like, no, the, I love that. Everything I that I do, I yeah. really like it. Yeah. I don't like when it starts to get turned into work. Like when people ask me to do favors for them, yeah. as much as I want to, yeah. uh, I don't like when it starts to feel like work, you know, when I'm pushing something on people that I'm not interested in. Yeah. Your you know? social media is so entertain entertaining too because it does feel like you're genuinely just hanging out with you at all times of the day, which I actually would like to get better at because I too enjoy social media. I just, um, I just go through like, like, I forget to do it sometimes. Yeah. And I want... I was seeing somewhere that people were saying Instagram's algorithm really wants you to be, like, active morning, afternoon, night. And so then my that rebellious is... side goes, well, then I'm not going to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just had that conversation the other day. And I started doing, like, more of TikTok. Because then TikTok doesn't feel like a commitment. I can do, like, whatever I want there. I hate that Instagram is doing that to I us. So It's like we've enjoyed this platform for so long. And they are messing with you. Because, like, if you take a couple days off, I don't know what that feels like. But if you do, like, friends will say, like, you, all your numbers will drop or whatever. Yeah. I really try to not look at that stuff Same. or compare it. In my head, I'm just like, okay, there's going to be down days and whatever. But I can't, I could not count those numbers. Same. You know, I know though, like when my numbers will go off the chart, but I don't want to try to recreate that all the time. No, because then it's it's not authentic, yeah. and people see through that shit all the time. Exactly. Jason is so hyper focused on numbers and not in a way where it's like, well, I better get this amount of views. It's just numbers. Like are, he wants to understand it. He probably. wants to understand yeah. it, uh, and that's how I I'm just like I'd rather not even look because I don't want to I don't want to try and recreate something that isn't authentic to me, and I get so in my head about all that shit. But that's why I'm kind of happy about YouTube is I do love the thought of like the listeners, obviously who I call vinos, like me being in their living room and they just like have me on while they're like cooking or like yeah. doing, hanging out with their dogs. I'm like, <laughs> hey, 
my god (laughs) i like love that thought so much and instagram i don't know what's happening with it tiktok i heard is banned in a couple states now yeah but i think it's only for people who have like state phone or government phones right because you can't ban an app in one state because then what you drive across the county the state line it just shuts off that's a good question. I have you know, no, no idea. I think it's for people who have like government phones. I think that's that'll never go through unless they got rid of TikTok completely. Yeah, because you could download it in Idaho and then go drive across the border. That's true. You know, that's true. Tick- um, I have so much. This fun on TikTok, conversation though. though is really funny because I always think about this kind of stuff because anybody who doesn't do social media for a living or they don't, they're not really active on it, would be like, "What the f- are they talking that's about?" So true. But no. I do think it's an interesting thing to think about, like from. From our end, looking at all this stuff, it's different. And that's where I get a lot of frustration, you know, because I get really frustrated when people who don't follow me, like, send me crappy messages or stuff like, I don't know, I wish that more people would kind of talk about that, like what it feels like to be on the other end of it. Like for me, like there are certain things that just like bum me out. I'm like, I enjoy this. Please just leave me alone. Let me do it my way. Right. You know, um, and so the numbers thing, that's why I'm like, I can't pay attention to that stuff because I don't want it to become work. I don't want Instagram to become work for me. Do you get like really involved in when people send you messages that piss you off? I know so- you go through phases where sometimes you like clap back or sometimes I'll you go let through it go. Phases and where so- I really clap back because I think that it ends up working, that it's usually like I'll message people back and I'll talk to them and they'll, they'll, they'll end up being a reason. They're like, oh, I'm having really a hard time or whatever. And we go through it and it's fine. Um, but it's just not healthy for me. But the sad mm-hmm. thing is, is if people follow me on Instagram, they know like I respond to a lot of people. Yeah. Like I and I get a shitload of DMs because yeah. I'm so active on there. Yeah. And I really do ask people questions. What do you think? So I get tons of feedback. Right. You know, I'll show friends who have way more followers than I do, like my DMs when I post stories even, and they're like, holy shit. Like what's even co- your posts, like even when people are commenting, the amount of comments you get because you're there responding and talking and people really know that about you. So they're like, well, I'm going to leave a comment because he'll probably respond to me. And your engagement is incredible. But I, yeah. And, but just so you know, it's because I really, really like it. You yeah. know, like I always make you a can point. Tell you do. Yeah. I, mean, I always make a point too. Like if I'm going to post a picture, I want to have time to respond to people. Like it's not for me, like, oh, here's a hot picture of me and enjoy it. And I walk away, yeah. you know, like I really do like to connect with people with that, but that's also why I went into doing hair. Like I like yeah. connecting with people one-on-one yeah. and I feel like we live in this world now where social media has taken over that now I'm trying to connect with thousands of people at a time that I'm like, no, I want to go in and comment to people. I want to message with them. Like podcasts then. Yeah. As well. It's the one-on-one thing, but yeah. it, doing hair in the chair, I would get, my clients undivided attention and yeah. i loved it you know when i was doing massive celebrities i got to go into their homes and we became really close because it was that like uninterrupted time where we mm-hmm. just sat and we really got to know each other and now that i focus on the hair brand and i don't do salon appointments anymore i really miss that like yeah. i miss the connection like i was so connected to my clients that's how i feel when i <clears throat> i saw an instagram of somebody i followed the other day where she's like are we still crying on instagram why are girls still doing that and i was like i'm not gonna take that personally but i actually feel some sort of relief when i cry on instagram or show a low moment because I get so many beautiful messages back and then I start connecting with people where they feel seen and uh, one of my favorite lines of all time, the words that I live by is that vulnerability always creates this connection. And so I, all the time, whenever I you know open up about my anxiety or if I'm having a bad day or I cry, all of a sudden this beautiful community shows up and we have really incredible conversations and I, I feel that. better after I it. I love that. I don't think you should ever stop doing that. I think it's so important to have spaces like that on the internet. I think so many people think like when they see it, like if they didn't know you and they just popped in, they saw you randomly crying, they'd be like, oh, this bitch needs yeah. so much attention, yeah. you know, because yeah. people always want to go to the negative. Yeah. And it's like, no, or are they really trying to connect? Or it's like a way to, I don't know. I think that kind of stuff is beautiful. And I think social media is not going anywhere. It's going to become more and more a part of our Mm -hmm. life that we're going to see more of that. People are going to share, you know, and like these people that we spend every single day with, they know us, you know, it'd be weird if we never did show an emotion. Yeah. And I I, sometimes I get this guilt factor too, where I, you know, if I hop on a private jet and then I'm going to these events and I want people to know, like, I also suffer from a lot of things that you at home do too 
that just because I get to do these things doesn't mean that my life is so incredible. I still, I feel stupid getting on a private jet. Anytime Jason wants to post, I'm like, don't post down on that. It's like one of those things where I'm like, Viv, you were on a private jet and did you post? Like, did it even happen? Uh, but then there, it's, it's like this confusion of feeling proud of certain times in my life that I'm at and also guilt because I was like, but don't think that it's just a highlight reel because I'm also like, a little depressed bitch a lot of times too <laughs> yeah no i mean there's a little fine line that you have to play there too because yeah. i'm sure like i think about that stuff a lot too like i really always no matter what happens in my life want to be aware of not showing off right because right. it's like we don't know where people are in yeah. their life and but there is something about inspiring people i guess yeah. you know i have a really hard time with that like i really don't like to show off you know I like know. i don't want to show our cars or much of our house. If people really pay attention to my Instagram, I show like two parts of my house and everyone's like, do a home tour, do a home tour. I'm like, I could never, my balls would shrink inside my body if I was walking and I was being like, and this room here, we designed it thinking about, well, I could never do it. Like, I'm so not good with Wait, showing you know, off. I actually did it. Uh, I did a home tour on my YouTube channel before and it's actually hilarious because nothing was even really set up in the other rooms. It just looked like a shitty house anyway. So it was kind of like, like humbling <laughs> like but, people are like you don't even have a couch i'm like it's, it's coming <laughs> but then there's the other thing i mean people really like that stuff i'm sure it's like a lot of people do home tours because it's probably like so many people view it but to me i just do not feel comfortable with that i i get it i mean but i do and i don't because there i am like bro robin in my bronco like <laughs> spent so much money on this <laughs> yeah no but that's good i mean you're proud of it you know are we gonna get a home tour of the new condo um we got a condo downtown we were just there and i posted a picture from it this weekend and uh but again no i don't we made it re look really beautiful you know and I, I am proud of it and i would want to show it off but um then there's also that part of me that people are going to be like i don't know i'm so weird about the bragging stuff that was like a big it. thing for us yeah. growing up my parents were really big about you know you never talk about Humble, money all, yeah. yeah all that kind of stuff and that's something that was really stuck with me like that's i would a really feel really great quality yeah, yeah. But then there are parts where it's like, you should be proud and you should show off, you know? Yeah, it. I felt <clears throat> Not that, show off. But. I, no, I felt that way when I got the Bronco. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't, like, this is kind of embarrassing. And then I was like, wait, I worked really hard. And like, if people knew what I spent on this house, they'd be like, oh, treat yourself, Caitlin. Like, yeah. <laughs> I barely spent money on this house. I've been in here for like six years and I'm like frugal with my money. And so, and then I'm like, I oh, know you'd be proud of that. But I know what you mean. Um, I need to have a weekend at your condo. You we have to. to come we'll do like a fun. It's so fun down there. And now that like it's getting nice weather, like it has a beautiful pool up on the roof and stuff. So we'll have like a fun weekend. Down and there. when this comes out, it's Pride Month. I, w I have questions about this for you. Do you like when people um, celebrate Pride Month or do you think people take advantage of it to be like, Look, I'm an ally and like post a photo of a rainbow. Oh my gosh, like... Caitlin, I had no idea we were going to talk about that because that's actually something that I was like weird about in the car this morning. Really? Because I have this uh, love for TikTok right now. I think it's so fun. I yeah. think that like you can scroll TikTok and you like meet new people that you didn't know about, you know? Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden I'm like, I'm obsessed with this girl who like yeah. lives in the middle of nowhere and she just talks on her phone every day and I relate to her, you know? So I follow these people. Well, there's this thing that's going on on TikTok right now and it's breaking my heart that's all about the pride stuff. You know, I'm yeah. a very proud gay man. Yeah. You know, I will be very honest. I don't go to a lot of pride festivities. I just don't. You know, mm -hmm. I'm realizing now the importance of pride. I think that there's a lot of people like who want to say things like, why do gay guys get like a month and where's straight pride? And they say all these really kind of just what? silly things that if you really thought about what is the message of pride, it's about acceptance, right? Right. Well, for so long, I felt safe as a gay man. Like I totally feel safe in my life and I can get married and all that kind of stuff. Um, but all of a sudden it feels like it's being judged a little bit again. And so I see the importance of it, which kind of mm -hmm. makes me like, oh, maybe I want to go to Pride this year and like yeah. be there and like be a part of it or whatever. But what was upsetting me on TikTok is all these videos about there's these people going into Target and they're all pissed off that there's a Pride section in Target. And there's these women who are just like, this is so disgusting. And they're trying to push this agenda on people. And there's people who are going into it. And anybody listening know that I'm processing this as I'm speaking. I'm not trying to preach. I don't right. care what people's beliefs are. Yeah. If you don't understand the gay community or whatever, and you're still trying to figure it out, that's fine. I'm not going to preach to people. But the one thing that throws me off is when people say the whole thing about like they're pushing the agenda, don't you realize that the agenda might just be acceptance? Like people right. are saying like, we accept you. This is a tiny part of Target just to show like right. we stand with these people. And also people need to realize it's like, 
I have a niece that I'm absolutely obsessed with. If my niece came to my house during Pride Month and my sister wanted to put a cute little pride shirt on her to come into our house to show yeah. that her niece is my niece is proud. like you guys think this through it just sounds so dumb to talk like that right now i so that was really breaking my heart i was like i can't believe people are reverting back to that hateful space it's pure ignorance because you're like now but now you're pushing your straightness on people and you're like uh what's the word contradicting yourself with all these thoughts and hateful things where it's like yeah pride is about acceptance so i'm sorry of you of you white woman and white straight men like have you not been accepted well that's the thing that's so wild because even me as like a white gay man like i need to check myself because i People get so mad when you talk about privilege and stuff, but I know my privilege as a white gay man, the way that I look, I can walk into any space and feel very comfortable, yeah. you know, and then I have a beautiful partner, you know, yeah. and the two of us together, you know, so I have to check myself on that. And that's why pride has all, all of a sudden become something that I've been thinking a lot about, because I'll be very honest, like years ago, I was like, oh, pride is so stupid. Like, what are these people doing? Like, why are we where? Why are we in the streets and floats and all this kind right. of stuff? Like, we're gay. Big deal. Let's move on. Right. But now I'm kind of like, oh, okay, you got to still speak up because there's still people who just want to hate. That's so true because so many people, like w from what you're saying, it sounds like you kind of were like, it should be just accepted in general. We don't need to make a big month out of it, a pride float. We don't need to go shout it in the streets. Like, why can't we all just be accepted and live like the rest of people? But also on the other hand, you're like, no, we need to stand together and have a community and show our pride and get people involved and especially in freaking nashville yeah i feel like yeah that's well a... that's i mean i grew up in southern california i was raised mormon but i was in the most safe place ever i yeah. never felt uncomfortable being a gay man and i'll be very honest like moving to the south i love it i love nashville but just this past year all of a sudden i start i have felt something change mm -hmm. and i noticed too that like my dms are the fag word like when somebody oh, wants to like, when somebody wants to like be shitty to me and they yeah. come like write nasty stuff to me it's all that again or like what you know that kind of stuff and i'm like okay that hate is still out there so it's like maybe we do need to address it and that's why people want to show support and this is all about just showing support and acceptance and love and i'm sorry but i grew up real religious yeah. and we really did follow the teachings of jesus yeah. and it was to love everyone and accept everyone you yeah. know and like mormons especially i mean mormons we think we are the chosen one right i'm not mormon <laughs> anymore but we i was raised like around people who are like we are the chosen ones yeah but my parents would always like you are not better than anyone else never preach our religion onto anybody else yeah. you know you know your relationship with god and i'm just so confused how we're going back in time where people are like my god and a lot of people don't care what your God thinks. You've right. got to remember that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, my goodness. And I love religion. I see the yeah. importance of it. I have such a faith. I have my own relationship yeah. with all of that, right? Yeah. And I don't want to preach to anyone. But the way that people are starting to preach at each other, like, you guys, there's like, what, 7,000 religions in the world? It's... Why are people acting like theirs is the one way? <laughs> I'm like, so confused. Well, and I would be, I would really love to see what their way says of how you treat other people. Right, right. That's where yeah. it gets so the contradiction always just is the biggest piss off to me is all of the trolls all of the you know mean people and the bullies and all these people so many of them believe in jesus and the bible and his ways and it doesn't make it does not add up it doesn't because like i said i really i'm so thankful that i grew up around really really nice very religious people yeah. but they were the nicest kindest yeah. people right so i have such a good relationship with religion a lot of times when i'll talk about being mormon sometimes i'll get feedback where people are like i can't believe that you're saying you're proud of being raised mormon you know the mormon religion hates gay people i'm like i didn't experience that and yeah. i grew up with really kind yeah. nice people you know so we all have our different thing but what i think that really oh my god this is we need to stop this in a second because <laughs> it's like either gonna make people really mad or happy but um the one thing is it's like um i think that people who are very religious should start paying attention to people who are in their religion who are being really hateful mm. because it's really giving religion a bad taste and that yeah. makes me sad because i think that a world without religion would be sad i like that it, it we, gives us morals i agree especially with how many different religions like you said there are i have such a strong faith in like I'm very spiritual and 
I don't understand other religions, but I think they're beautiful. Like yeah. I don't understand certain ones, but I'm like, how beautiful for them to have that belief and that faith and yeah. something that they and you it know, doesn't affect you and it doesn't affect you, me. You just leave it alone. And right. then, so my point with that is kind of saying like, if you are religious and like you have an annoying Aunt Becky who just trolls Facebook all day, spouting off her religious mm -hmm. beliefs, call Aunt Becky and be like, hey, you're giving us a bad name. You're making <laughs> yeah. us look bad. That's not the way that we were taught to be a part of this community or to be right. religious. And I think that those weird, hateful, loud voices are really r ruining it. And that's why people are getting such a bad rap. Remember yeah, years so ago, I remember when I was younger, people would be like, oh, so-and-so, they're such a nice family. They're really sweet. They go to church every Sunday, whatever. And now people will say, I'm like, oh, I met so-and-so. And they're like, oh, just be careful. Like they're church people. Like yeah. it's turning. Now it's church. True. if you say you go to church, people are like, oh, are they weird? And it's because of the bad, loud it, ones. It's true. So if you love your church, like that should be the message in your church groups is like, you guys, let's be better versions of ourselves <laughs> that's so i totally agree i'm i'm reading in my notes and i'm laughing just thinking i'm not gonna we're not gonna go there but somebody wanted to know if you and kristen ever fight and i just laughed because i thought about the, our whole conversation <laughs> that one time that we're not gonna get into no we can talk about that though if, if it was important to somebody Okay, I know in the past I've definitely experienced some tightness in my stomach, like when I'm stuck in traffic or I found myself just feeling a little sick before stressful things at work or a big interview. One time I had to do this big interview in front of a bunch of wine distributors and buyers and ooh, the tummy was twisting. I learned that it's actually because our gut, not our brains, are responsible for our stress response. So to manage stress and feel calm and in control, you have to give your gut what it needs to thrive. And I trust, personally, Just Thrive Probiotic because it's recommended by some of the biggest names in the health industry. Just Thrive Probiotic supports digestive, immune, and total body health and actually produces antioxidants right in the gut. So once it arrives in the gut, it acts like a personal little gardener, safely eliminating bad bacteria and replenishing the good. Our bodies are amazing. For next level stress management, I pair the probiotic with Just Thrive's breakthrough formula, Just Calm. Just Calm's proprietary ingredients have been clinically proven to do the almost unimaginable, reduce perceived stress, improve sleep quality and energy, and even encourage better focus and flow. You can learn more about this groundbreaking company in the Good Gut Health episode I did from December 21st i went into depth with the co-founder tina it is such a good episode and right now you can save 20 percent off this dynamic duo bundle of just thrive probiotic and just calm when you go to just thrivehealth.com and use code vine at checkout that's just thrivehealth.com with code vine and while you're there be sure to check out all of their other research-based gut and immune health products there's even a probiotic for your little fur baby all with the bottom of the bottle guarantee Okay, we all know this, not a big surprise, life moves fast. Sometimes it's spooky, like spooky fast. But Starbucks Ready to Drink Coffee delivers an uplifting boost that helps you tune into the moments that matter wherever you are, whatever you've got going on. It's Starbucks coffee conveniently packaged for life on the go, and it includes a variety of your favorite beverages from bottled frappuccino, chilled coffee drink, for a pop of flavor to the bold and smooth taste of nitro cold brew, which has been my personal favorite for a while now. It's been 100 degrees in Nashville, so I love to grab a cold brew when I am, you know, ready for some more energy and get through my workout, get through my day, keep on keeping on, you know what I'm saying? Honestly, whether I'm just working or traveling or hanging out with friends, I know there's this special specific hour or two in the day where I just need a little something something and that's why Starbucks ready to drink coffee is the perfect thing to keep nearby it's so easy so convenient and it tastes just like the coffee you already know and love from Starbucks Starbucks coffee ready for right now shop the full lineup online or in store wherever you buy groceries Oh, so, well, so a lot of asked. listeners just wanted to know, because, of course, everybody knows your best friend, Kristen. And then that's how Kristen and I became friends was through you. And so a lot of people were like, they're just perfect. And do they ever fight? No, it's so funny. And I think that if somebody is if people are asking about that, like, of course, I would talk about it. But um, no, Kristen and I are really, really close, good friends. And it's like for a reason. We just really mesh Why well. Is your mic just like I don't know. It's like down. falling down. Like, <laughs> like, I'm like losing my <laughs> Direction. It's just dropping lower and lower. Every time I see, uh, it's just like slowly going down. I'm like, oh no. Is it this part here? Maybe. Um, no, Kristen and I are a, a really interesting uh, friendship. And my partner Scoot is always talking. He's like, you and Kristen are 
the exact like you're a boy girl version of each other and uh no we don't fight and we actually talk about a lot because chris and i are both very passionate people right yeah. like we will yeah. fight in our real totally. worlds right like i will definitely get in fights with friends and family and Kristen the same and we don't because we really understand each other like we know when to pull back yeah. and we're both very respectful of each other it was hard for me because i did Kristen's reality show very cavalier right yeah and we've been friends for t 20 years yeah. right but you do a reality show and then everyone sees you together and that becomes your identity right so after i was living in nashville and chris and i were spending all this time together and i would post stuff with us all, together all the time and it became this whole thing like where's Kristen? what's Kristen doing today are you guys are so cute oh my God. so then i told like a chris on relationship on instagram yes yeah, so i made a conscious effort i was like i'm not gonna post Kristen anymore even when we hang out we won't post anything yeah. together and we talked it through and i told her i was just like i don't want to be your little like bitch boy you know yeah. as much as you're my best friend i would post you every time we hang out together it became too much so to answer that no we have an awesome friendship like we talk all day long yeah. like even if it goes a few hours she's like uh hello where are you you know like we really have that friendship like we yeah. just really enjoy each other's um opinions on everything and i'm i love krista more than anything like my yeah, she's closest the best. friend in the world she's, she's literally so the best. rad right yeah, like <laughs> she's literally she's just the coolest like i knew that you guys would get along so well and it was so important to me that you guys became friends but um kristen's really interesting because anyone that i will introduce her to they always have the same thing like when they meet her for the first time like she'll leave the situation they'll be like she's the coolest girl <laughs> yeah, ever like i think so that cool. everyone has this idea of maybe because she's been in the public eye for so long and they made her seem like kind of bitchy when yeah, she was yeah, on yeah. the the beach her. Kristen's a down ass bitch like she'll Me do totally. anything like we travel the world together and I'm the diva and I'm not even that much of a diva but like ev Kristen's cool with everything she's like oh the spot's cool like this is cool like this yeah, room's she's fine so down to she's earth so down which to I earth I freaking love because I feel like that's like the kind of people I crave in my life so yeah. once you find them you're like oh shit yeah um oh I was even gonna say uh, you speaking about posting all the time with Chris and then people start to be like where's Chris and people do that with you know relationships in general on Instagram where if you don't post someone they're like well where's this person and it's happened for I don't know it feels like two years now of Jason and I just because we do such separate things everyone's like why aren't you guys together all the time and it's so bizarre that yeah I've kind of pulled back on posting that too yeah no I, I totally get it. I do the same thing with Scoot my partner um and he hates social media so it's easier for me to not put him on all the time yeah I mean how much do you want to share you know like I don't know a lot I I know I know what you're saying <laughs> yeah I want to share a lot but like I don't want everyone to like it's so funny too like even Scoot will be like in the background sometimes and people like write something like is what's wrong with Scoot like are you guys fighting I'm like <laughs> bitch he just walked by the camera when i was acting like an idiot in the kitchen like <laughs> oh my God, it's like it's like you want and love when people are so invested but then when they're too invested you're like okay back off yeah a bit. yeah yeah there is a fly that just keeps flying around me and it's driving me absolutely banana um okay so i just had my friend low on the podcast and we talked about mary kill um skincare low bosworth um, no, uh, Lovon Rumpf. He's you've probably seen him in my Instagram. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Stylist, um, and so I was like, wait, I want to ask Justin his Mary Kill hair products. Ooh. Of so I pick the, the three, or you? You know, you pick like, because I like for me personally, I'm on this hair growth journey, so I'm obsessed with your uh, scalp scrub and the oil, the scalp oil. Um, those two are like in my routine along with what is my oh, silk scrunchies. So for you, your top three brands, cause you have a lot of products. We have a lot. We're constantly growing. Um, we're, and we're coming out with like a lot. So I'm very busy with all That's of that. Incredible. Um, so there are things, here's the thing, like certain things will be a good idea at the time. And then I notice that they don't hit as well as I thought. So they'll kind of go away as new yeah. things come in. Uh, so I do have favorites and then other ones that I don't like, but the ones that I don't like usually go away. But the um, scalp scrub, I'm all about scalp. I don't think people realize like how good that is for yeah. your hair to grow in healthy. Yeah. Um, you know, when your uh, scalp is clogged, your hair doesn't grow in as well. It starts to shed more. People use a lot of dry shampoos and a lot of products. So it, it lives on the scalp. So you have yeah. to really clean the scalp. So our scalp scrub is amazing. We just came out with a new one. Did you get our new one? No, not the new it's one. It's out of this world. It comes in an what? applicator bottle where it's like skinny. So you can oh, put it right at yeah, your yeah, scalp. Yeah. And it has salicylic acid in it. You leave it on for 10 minutes before you get in the shower. And then you wash it out. It's insane. You probably have one in your mailbox. Like Maybe I'm sure we sent one to you. Because I was going to bring you one today. And my assistant was like, no, we sent her some. Oh, yeah, but I'll make sure you get more. Well. Um, it's really, really good. So, um Mary Hill. Yeah. I would um we always want to just like f 
the one spicy, unpredictable one, right? Yeah. So like the one that I would want to is our actually our color fresh oil it's an oil that i think everyone should put oil in their hair every day because it's the best way for your hair to soak up like moisture and our oils really really lightweight yours is smells. incredible it never makes my hair oily yes it does Which not weigh your hair down yeah. and i work with so many blondes in my career and blondes tend to have finer hair yeah. so i wanted to make sure that the oil still gave all the hydration but no weighing the hair down so our color fresh oil is out of this world it's really good. and it's really really lightweight so the color fresh oil mary <laughs> the um acv hair rinse yeah just because i feel like uh she's loyal yeah you know what she's gonna do yeah, <laughs> no. but true. i really think that people over shampoo their hair yeah. so she, i want people to as much as possible skip a shampoo and use the acv rinse in place of it because shampoo is really what what is drying people's hair out it's a detergent so you're sudsing up your hair every time you shampoo right. and it dries your hair out so the acv rinse i want people to use as much as possible and then kill would be oh my god my team when they was if anyone listens they're like god, what are you gonna say what do you say uh we did a product that and i fought back on it because i didn't like the idea of it it was a sun and city spray that protected you from uv and stuff okay and i just i didn't think that anyone would really use that kind of a thing right. you know usually when you're out on a boat or at the beach the last thing you're thinking about is like protecting your hair right uh, so we made that product, and it worked well if you were using it. I just don't think people are going to use it all the time, so, so we're gonna um, kill, kill that one. Okay, that's fair. I have a question now that I'm thinking about it, because over shampooing and making it dry and all of that, but washing your hair once a week, is that a yay or a nay? I love it. You know, I think it's so wonderful when people uh, do the one style and they make it last yeah. because then your scalp is producing all these good oils and that's what's hydrating your hair. So those are, okay, that's what I was worried that that was clogging because I only wash my hair once a week and I'm like, are all my good oils and certain things I'm putting in my hair, is that clogging it? No, well, the oils that you're putting on your hair, you're usually putting on the ends yeah. down, right? Or the mid shafts down. Yeah. I'm more worried if you're using dry shampoo no every dry day, shampoo. you want to get that off yeah. or things that like live on your scalp. But it is so good to shampoo your hair less. I think it's it's a winner, except I will say like I'm so not grossed out by people's scalp because I played with people's right. scalps all the time. Like yeah. people would come into the salon and be like, oh, my God, I'm so embarrassed. My scalp is disgusting. I'm like, I have seen the worst, yeah, the like worst. nothing freaks me out. But there were, are some people who will try to go like two weeks and they're loading their hair with dry shampoo. Oh, and yeah. that gets nasty because it just sits on your scalp holds all the oil right there clogs all of your uh pores so that's an issue but no shampoo in your hair once a week if you can it's great what about because i use your spray for color root spray for any grays that i have is that okay to sit on the scalp it is because ours is really like it's a lightweight one yeah. and you're probably spraying it just in certain particular yeah. areas yeah. right and um that one kind of it goes on and it dries and it kind of like flakes away over time or if you hit it with the blow dryer yeah. like kind of it'll go away uh, so I wouldn't leave it on for weeks, but like you okay. said, like a few days, not a big deal. And and the thing is, where you're changing the game is you're actually taking care of your scalp. You're scrubbing your scalp, yeah. so you're fixing the problem. There's okay. a lot of people who just won't. Like they'll never take care of their scalp. They'll do like a light shampoo, and they don't realize why their hair is shedding so much. I have been so on the um, your scalp, the oil, the scrub, and the ACV for years. It's, and that has that with new your hair and is silk gross scrunchies. it's so different because i did your hair for years or like yeah. at different times in your yeah. in the years that we've known each other and your hair at certain points was busted like your hair busted. i never thought your hair would grow that okay, long but these like, are no i know but the, but i know your hair and yeah, i always yeah. ask you about your hair every time yeah. i see you but even your front pieces like yeah. you used to never be able to grow the very front pieces very long at all I like know. all of your stuff is healthy it's in a good I've, place i've been because i've been using the right products yeah <laughs> um, just a couple random hair questions that I have for you because pe I feel like it's a whole thing right now where people, uh, people's hair growth or yeah. hair health. It's like really trending. Um, so back to the random hair questions. Um, if everyone on the planet had to have the exact same hairstyle, like we all got on board to have the same hairstyle, what would it be? Oh my gosh. What color and what style? Well, um... I mean, I can envision it in my head. Like, so we're all... We all have to do it. We're all genderless now? Yes. <laughs> so I think about, like, um, surf hair. Like, surf hair. Like, I think people should have, like, their natural root, yeah. you know, and then those light kind of bits that the sun would naturally uh, lighten. Yeah. And then I just like a messy kind of natural wave. Just let it go. Yeah. Uh, so the cut would be, like, long layers, you know, okay. uh, so that you could wear it kind of wavy. Um, but I just really like natural. I think that people should like dress kind of funky, maybe do their makeup a little bit funky, but then your hair should suit your face shape and your skin color. 
Uh, so True. the color and the shape. Um, so I guess we can't really ask that because there's too many different shapes and colors and hairstyles. It's hard to, to say, but to the one that. that I said, like when I'm talking just kind of like that surfer hair, like yeah. it's messy. Like, I don't know if you do you know the model Erin Wasson. No. Like she always has incredible hair or like Kate Moss when she has her long yeah. hair. It doesn't even look like there's really a haircut to it. Yeah. Giselle, when she was like years ago, when Giselle had those perfect highlights that were just kind of on the end. Yeah. And it was those grown out layers, you know, yeah, just you always kind of fell into place. I kind of I want to do that to my hair again. I want to lighten my hair again. Just like I think you should just do the very ends. I'll send you inspo pictures tonight. Maybe we'll okay. do it like fun one one time. I, I don't want to take you away from whoever's coloring your hair right now, though. No, I don't like that. He would bow down to that because okay. <laughs> he loves you, and he. Would... Well, maybe we'll do it together like a collaboration thing. Wait, him he and would I. die. He like he's oh like wait really it's the guy that your cat goes for, to yeah i would love let's do something fun one time I like do a little play night where we like um i'll put it on my youtube let's do that that would be so cute i've always wanted to meet him too oh my god he's the but best. i never want to be like a, a client stealer because people i'll always meet really no, interesting i was originally with you yeah yeah, yeah he yeah. looks he i'm sure he gets it too he's busy he's not worried about it no he's not worried about it and he would Yes. No. I always meet like these really cool people in Nashville that I've always actually like secretly wanted to work with and stuff. And like, oh my god, will you do my hair like one time? And I'm like, I don't want to steal you away from who's been doing your hair for like years though. And I don't want, I don't want the hair community in Nashville like hate me. My mom was even like, so if I come out there, do you think Justin would do my hair? Oh my god. (laughs) I'm like, I don't think he does hair anymore, mom. But uh, okay, if that. If we could do that, I would be... That'd be cute. That'd It'd be, be so fun. Yeah. Be really and I've been wanting fun. to meet him, so that's the perfect way to do it. Okay, last part of the podcast is um, called If I'm Being Honest. <laughs> so basically, it's the same thing as my other podcast where we do confessions. But something um, that's been weighing on you recently that ha- that's like controversial that people be like, I don't see where you're coming from. Mine... I'll give you a couple. Oh, I love like, I really think chapstick is a scam. You're so funny because you know that I've always talked about that. What? Yeah. I've always said that, like, I think that chapstick, chapstick is a scam because it's the same thing that I think about shampoo. Since we were young, we were taught to shampoo our hair yeah. like five times a week or yeah. every time you got in the shower, you shampoo. Well, when you shampoo over and over, your scalp starts to produce tons of oil. That's why people say, oh, I have to shampoo every day because I have a greasy right. scalp. I'm like, no, bitch, you have a greasy scalp because you shampoo every day. Yes. Your scalp is freaking out that it's overproducing oils. And I think the same thing happens with chapstick. If you start using chapstick all the time, you're going to chap lips all the time. I've never used chapstick. I've never had chapped lips. Yes. You know? But the See? times that I have, because I remember like, like, when I was in high school, like I really wanted to use that cherry, the blistic one, because I <laughs> yeah, love the smell blistics, of it. Yeah. And I used to use it, and my lips were chapped all the time. Yeah, it's the so worst. then my mom was like, You have to stop using chapstick. Your body's like thinks it needs it now. Okay, so we're on the same page. Yeah. So I think it's I think chapstick is so overrated. Okay. But it smells right. good, so like I get it and it's cute. What else do you think is overrated? I guess that could be a good if you're being honest, what is overrated? Um what is overrated? Oh my gosh, that's a hard one. Usually I would have like... I know, I feel like it would be on your tip of your tongue right now. Um, What is overrated? Oh, I was sitting way too low this whole time. I, um... Keep sinking. I don't want to go deep. I'm such a deep person. I always think of something deep. Like, I don't want to just be like, I don't want to be like bell bottoms or like high (laughs) high waisted pants. Like, I just, that's not me. I wouldn't talk about that. But I think that um, I want people to realize that being famous or a celebrity or having tons of followers on social media can be overrated and i think that there's such this desire for everyone like especially i was talking about tiktok and it's a lot of these people who are like in the middle of nowhere and it's like you can tell that they really want this following on tiktok and they're doing and i hope it makes them happy but i hope that it becomes more of a discussion of like it's not for everyone you know people do have this idealized vision of what a celebrity life would look like and I used to want that so badly and I always thought I was cut out for it and I'll never forget hearing Kim Kardashian being like I can I am meant to do this like she's meant to like she is one of those people that like she should have done this exactly yeah she is living her truth and then I remember when I came off the bachelorette I remember having a full conversation with myself in the mirror and going you do not like this. You do not like all of this attention. You do not like people being Like you were reminding you. yourself? Yes, or you were I was wanting like, remember your... this moment. No, I didn't oh, okay. want it. I right. was like, remember this moment. You do not want to feel like this again. Like you were at the height of everything, like on a cover of every magazine. You do not like this. And I'll never forget that because now I'm like, 
yeah, I'm getting back into like TV and like it'd be cool to like get back into that world. And I just would have to be really careful. But I think that your thing is like you're a natural entertainer. Like you like to I entertain. Love to entertain. Yeah, you like. And I have that part of me too. I think about my role as a kid in the family. Like I always was entertaining. I was really loud. I love making people laugh. I love bringing people together. I love making people me feel too. safe. Yeah. So it's like that's what social media I'm does for me. But same. I mean, love exact that same stuff. as that. And I've been like that since I was little too. And that's why I always wanted to be in entertainment. I didn't know what it was going to look like, but I wanted to entertain. And so now I'm like, I maybe I would do. I, did you do you follow Taylor Lautner, the actor from yeah. like the Wolf guy? Yeah, yeah, he's adorable. But I know I don't follow him. He's adorable. I had him on my podcast recently, and he just did a whole thing um, for mental health um, awareness day month. I don't know what it was, um, but he was talking about how he went on a new thing to do like some press for um, the Squeeze, this company that his wife does. And he showed all the mean comments he was getting. And it was like talking about like, oh, that bro's hairline. Oh, God, he didn't age well. Dude aged like a raisin oh, and blah, blah. And he's still so cute and <clears throat> looks the exact same. And he was like, these comments remind me of why I don't read into comments because it really doesn't matter what you think about me. But he goes, even like three years ago, this would have really hurt me. But yeah. I worked a lot on my mental health and blah. And it just made me feel so sad because like it's a huge thing. And that's why I say the thing that I was saying the overrated that is because you also watch these people on like a TikTok or an Instagram who develop this big following, right? That they maybe didn't necessarily want the following and you see yeah. them have complete breakdowns yep. and it breaks, it like breaks my heart. Like I think about like, because my sister's having kids now, my, both my brothers have kids. Like I really think about kids and yeah. keeping kids like protected in their mind and keeping them innocent and stuff. And I just watch this social, social media obsession where everybody thinks they want to be famous. And I, and I think because I spent all that time with huge celebrities mm -hmm. and I, because I was coloring their hair they'd go film a Jennifer Anderson would go to Canada to film a movie right. and I'd have to go up there to touch up her roots Miley Cyrus would go on tour I would go touch up her roots on yeah. tour and I would watch the way that these really big celebrities would have to be in the world like yeah. I would yeah. go to be with them for three days while they were on location somewhere we wouldn't be able to leave the hotel yeah. and it's like you have to be I mean that's another level kind of thing right. oh my but gosh it's I like, can't even imagine but you have to think about like do you want that much attention do you want that many people watching your every move and stuff and I just get afraid for the like the younger generation He's is there's so this obsession them. i think of that too because my niece is 15 and uh, there was a period where i was like oh shit she wants to be tiktok famous but now she doesn't care at all and it's great yeah. but i got really scared there for a moment yeah um alicia were you trying to say something to me oh <laughs> she goes no <laughs> <laughs> no okay great i'm gonna play one game with you before i let you go okay it's called crocodile dentist oh my god <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. Are you warm in here? Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know why it feels like the AC is not working in here. And I cranked it down to 66. No, but like I can feel the air. I think it's the lights. Whenever I sit in front of the lights, I start lights. to get like I'm actually up. really happy the cameras usually turn off because they overheat and they haven't. <laughs> oh, Alicia fixed them. You are my hero. <laughs> um, okay. So what we have to make a bet or something. Whoever, whoever the, makes the alligator snap. You have to tell a really embarrassing story. Oh my god! <laughs> or you have to do a shot. <laughs> okay, embarrassing story. <laughs> okay, pick a tooth, any tooth. So wait, what do you do? You just press a tooth down, and he might bite you. Oh my gosh! Ah! <laughs> 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 Let's do it again. Okay, that was that too was quick. Okay, okay, okay. Oh my god! Oh my god! Really I love does, shit like this. It really does something to my. <laughs> no! <laughs> Isn't it the worst? I love that though. Like my heart rate is so elevated. I, I'm like now. sweating. Even more. I was hot because of the lights in here. Now I'm like really sweating. Oh my god. Oh my okay. gosh. Okay, Do I tell my story? Yeah. A uh, story. Uh, okay, this is a good one. When I was in high school, I was like a freshman in high school, and we had me and my best friend. His brother was a senior, and he was like the coolest senior guy, like yeah. whatever. And whenever we hung out with him, we felt like really cool. So he took us to our first high school party, and I grew up in a neighborhood where like high school parties, like the Los Angeles Times one time wrote an article about Stop. our town because our high school parties were 
so over the top. Like it looked like the shit you'd see in a movie. Like we would have like bands and they'd be broken up by helicopters what? and stuff. Like it was just like a high school party town, cool. right? And so all I was just obsessed with going to high school parties. So the first high school party I ever went to, he took us. He was so cool, whatever. I was trying to like fit in with like all the older cool people. I went inside to go to the bathroom and I it was like one of the first times I drank and for whatever reason I had to take a shit. Yeah. I had to go to poop. Yeah. So I went upstairs and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go really quick, like whatever. So I go upstairs, there's a long line. I go into the bathroom and there's a line waiting outside. I go to the bathroom, I'm just gonna do this really quick or whatever. I go to flush the toilet, it won't flush. Oh, it's no. like and the whole line is like that. Oh, no. So I took the toothbrush cup in the bathroom, scooped, scooped it, it out, out and tossed it out the window. This is hilarious. And uh it went down into an area where a bunch of people were hanging out and when we were down there like no! later it didn't hit anyone there was none of that type of thing but later in the evenings some like there were people who were like what the hell is that smell out there so that's my embarrassing story ew that's so gross but no do you know why i'm laughing i said that's so funny lo has the same story he literally no was like, he was like on a date with a guy and they went to his house same thing happened he was like well because he's like, before we have sex, I need to go. I can't just like hold it in. And he went and scooped same thing and oh threw it out the window. Oh my God. I just remember I was like shaking. I was like in ninth grade or whatever. <laughs> and I was like shaking, freaking out. And I was like, but I'm like such like, I'll always figure out something. Like yeah, I'm like yeah. a little ninja. Like I'll take care of it. But um, yeah, <laughs> that was, it was, th oh, it was the worst. <laughs> you know, that makes me so uncomfortable to talk about right now. <laughs> <laughs> that actually is really good. I'm, I'm glad you shared that with us. And with the class, I would say thank you for sharing with the class. Um, thank you so much for coming over and being on the pod. Is there anything that we didn't talk about that you want people to know? Um, Where no, can we... they get your hair products? Oh, all of our products are on dphue.com and then Amazon. And then we're in all Ulta Beauty stores. So That's across so cool. the nation, if you're out shopping and you see an Ulta Beauty store, check it out in ultabeauty.com. Uh, but no, I think we covered everything. The one thing I want to say is just like... Uh, remember that people are hurting and just like be nice when yeah. we get caught up in like all of this stuff uh, you know on the news and stuff we're being fed things to get us angry and outraged yeah. you know and we can, we're all allowed to vote the way that we want and believe right. in our beliefs or whatever but i feel like too many people are getting too comfortable putting hate out into the world mm -hmm. and you have to realize that there are people who are small or if they feel small or they're part of a small community that they're being hurt right now yeah. so just take it into consideration before you spew crap on the internet because i'm seeing a lot of crap on social media right now and i'm like wow people are getting really comfortable being hateful right now yeah i agree i agree with all all of that even like in so many different situations like i've even seen more hate going on on my own facebook group that usually is just full of love and i'm like what's happening yeah there's because there's something in the air and i feel like yeah. we're being fed a lot of things to get us to fight about issues and people are uh losing their cool i think i went boxing the other day and the instructor had gone to church and at their church they brought in a um trauma counselor and like um a social media trauma counselor as well and they talked about how our body if we're in a situation that's like say we were in a shooting our body goes into fight or flight mode and when you consume it through media your body just gets that trauma trapped in the body from seeing it and you don't have a way of letting it out. That literally just gave me chills because I feel like I see that happening with so many people and right so now. And so I feel like there's a lot of trapped anger and trauma in people's bodies yes. and they don't, Where and she was saying exercising is a way of getting it out, moving your body, talking about it, doing therapy is ways of getting it out for the people that aren't doing that and they're trying to take it out on other social media platforms. They're not physically or verbally getting it out and they're doing it through social media. These are like oh really gosh. like people with some trauma Trapped, tra trapped trauma inside of them. Wow, you should have that person on your podcast. I should have that person that needs, on my podcast. But That's that a great needs idea. to be a huge conversation that people start That's having. A great idea. Like people are forgetting that it's like you're putting this stuff out there, and we're giving into like these weird. I don't know. I just we can see everything now. Where people have body cams and social media, and you have like no choice but to consume that. You negative consume it media. and you just hold on to it, and, and I sit it. with it, and I'm such an empath. Like Same. something I hate about myself. I wish I could change it, but no! all no, I know. But it may it makes me loving to other people. But like the way that I feel things for other people, and I take it on. I wish that I could fix that a little bit. But it when is. I'm scrolling Instagram, and I see people being made fun of 
of or I see nasty comments about people that I care about uh -huh. or something, I take it in and I yeah. hold on to it. And like, so I know I'm hurting, so I'm sure other people are. Well, there you go. Now when you go to Kevin and you're, you can like think about those things and like let Getting it out. Getting them out. Yeah. Well, that's why working out is so important yeah. to me. Like I have to do it. Same. Like, I never knew how important it was to me till my 30s. I thought I hated it. And now I totally use it as like a form you of crave therapy. it like when you go on vacation don't you still want to do, do it like i wake up at hotels and i go sweat yeah like and people are always like how do you keep it going i'm like because i love it like i okay, i'm not so that I, good on vacation but <laughs> but i feel like for me it's my favorite part of the day because i really check out and i'm focusing on myself or whatever but that high after like i'm addicted to that high when i get, I get a sweat it. in like you know i always feel better as soon as i do it no matter what you have to just get up and keep going i yeah. hate when people do like that like toxic uh, like hustle oh hustle culture yeah, because yeah. i think it's fine to take time to yourself totally but when you learn that it's like sometimes pushing through does help it's oh, I like still take time for my like oh i do too trust me yeah. like sunday i don't leave Sundays. the couch Sundays, <laughs> i know i ordered the you... whole menu from shake shack like yes. two of everything oh, i did leave that i had Sundays ivs come to me massage yeah. come to me so i love taking time to yourself oh my God. But... i'm so doing that this sunday um okay well let's have a fun weekend um at your new condo yeah, let's do it for sure. My birthday is June nineteenth. Oh, let's do something cute. Well, let's do a big dinner. I was dinner just talking to Cat about this and how we were like, okay, let's, we we're thinking about the group. We're like, Scoot, Justin, Kristen, me, Worth, Cat, Jason, whoever else. That let's. We could think of. Um, we could even do it down there, like we and we could get rooms also at the Conrad Hotel or something. Like we could do a night downtown. So I'm fun. not going to take over your birthday, but I'm up for no, whatever. Th please take it over. <laughs> I want to like get catering and like just have a fun night and like do something like buy a pool in the day and then go out at night and have a really good dinner. Let's do it. Okay. I'm so excited. Okay, fine. Okay, your session is now ending. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Caitlin Bristow. Your session is now ending. And if I'm being honest, I wouldn't mind a rating and review.